Hi, I'm Lauren Underwood, Congresswoman from the Illinois 14th. So it's been one year since I beat six guys in a Democratic primary, got 57% of the vote, and became the Democratic nominee for Congress in the Illinois 14th District. And I'm so proud of the way that my team grew and we were able to knock on doors and connect with voters in all seven counties in uh, Northern Illinois. You see, my district is half suburban, but it's also half rural. And so there's a lot of people who told us that they hadn't heard from an elected official, hadn't heard from any Democrats in like 10 years. And so it was on us to get out there and to stand in living rooms and to stand in cul-de-sacs in the middle of soybean fields and to talk with folks about what was on their mind. And we did it. We won in November. I won by five points. And now, if you can believe it, there are three Republicans that have already filed to run against me. We've only been on the job for two and a half months, um, but they say they want their seat back. And uh, so it's time to get the crew together again uh, to make sure that we are not backsliding in 2020. Climate change is a huge threat to our planet, obviously, but to our national security. And I know there are so many of us who are struggling in our day-to-day -day lives. Maybe um, we're not working. Uh, maybe we don't have access to great health care coverage. Maybe our kids don't have uh, great schools to go to or we don't have childcare options uh, for them. And there are so many immediate issues in our everyday lives that to sit back and to think about climate change just feels like too much, not immediate, and really just not up there in our list of priorities. Listen, I hear you. I really do. And we're working on all those other issues, but I need everybody to just pay attention to what's going on in our planet, to these extreme weather events, these infectious diseases that are popping up that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, when we see uh, whole communities underwater, it's a problem. And for so many communities of color, particularly African-American communities, we have been subjected to environmental hazards and environmental threats for generations. And so if we don't start to pay attention to this threat of climate change and how it impacts our communities, Community. It's my fear that we're going to be uh, among the losers um, in this climate crisis, and it's on us. It's up to us to be supporting candidates who want to address climate change head on. It's up to us to be holding folks accountable for their actions that further pollute and further harm our planet. And if we choose to opt out at this time, I, I cringe at the thought of what's going to happen to our kids and their kids um, in the years to come. Net neutrality is so important. We've heard about the Trump administration's efforts to keep people from accessing the internet in a free and open way. That's so important for people going to school, folks who need access to telemedicine, to be able to log in and talk to their doctor because they live in a rural community. It's really important for entrepreneurs to be able to um, conduct their business online. And the Trump administration's efforts to block that free and open internet is a problem. So that's why I am so proud to be a co-sponsor of H.R. 1644, the Save the Internet Act, which is the House Democrats' efforts to uh, preserve net neutrality. We need to save the internet. And in 2019, I know that we can count on all of your support to do so. So if you have a representative who has not signed onto our bill, reach out, let them know that you're expecting them to support a free and open internet. It's critically important. So healthcare was the number one issue in the 2018 election. And Americans from all communities came together and said, listen, we know we need access to high quality, affordable healthcare coverage. And there are many ways to achieve that goal. I personally believe that healthcare is a human right. And that's been foundational to my nursing practice. And uh, that's why I got into the healthcare field. That's why I ran for office, uh, because pre-existing conditions were no longer being protected, or certainly they were under threat by the Trump administration. And I couldn't stand by and let that happen. And so many of us were motivated to act uh, because of healthcare issues. And so we've seen a couple proposals 
from people in support of an idea uh, like hashtag Medicare for all. And I think this is very exciting that we have uh, so many people, regular folks, having conversations about what our healthcare system should look like. Um, but we know that healthcare is an issue where there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of detail because what we don't want to have happen is clear winners and losers and where people, people like us, are sometimes left out of that winner column and can't access healthcare services. Why? Uh, maybe because they're not in our neighborhoods. Uh, maybe they're too expensive. Maybe they don't take our type of insurance coverage or maybe there's some kind of language difference uh, for you know, people who are not native English speakers. And so I think that some of the discussion that we're having right now around Medicare for All is how can we transform our healthcare system in a way that is inclusive, in a way that, that allows people who need the coverage to get the coverage that they need um, and it's done in a way that people can afford. How much is it going to cost? And so we're at a stage right now where we're, again, we're brainstorming and talking about these ideas. And it's my hope that we all, as young people of color, use our voices to let our elected officials know what we want to see. Because this is our country, too. And uh, we should have a voice in these really important decisions. So I'm a millennial. I'm 32 and I'm in Congress. There's a little cohort of us now for the first time in the Democratic caucus, and now folks are talking about many of our issues. But I want all the millennials who are, and Generation Z, I see y'all too, um, who are watching this to engage, right? So if you're not registered to vote and you don't know how to vote, to make sure you go out and vote. For those of you who are living in communities where you know something's not right, you see it every day, it, you know, gets on your nerves, it's an inconvenience, or maybe just plain wrong, instead of shrugging it off and saying, someone needs to do something about that, I'm asking you to step up. To step up and figure out how to get your name on a ballot and run. I'm from a community where so many people have seen um, opportunities and challenges and need to engage, but just didn't know how. And so when they joined our campaign, they learned how to door knock and they learned how to talk to their neighbors about these political issues and then decided to become candidates themselves. And so now we have supporters who are now on county board or who are now on city councils or who are now state reps. And it's very, very exciting. Um, and I think that that's something that's not out of reach for our generation. The time is now. The country is waiting for your leadership. They will have your back in, in your campaign, and so you will find um, support. We just need to demonstrate the courage to step forward and run. So um, I would encourage everybody to do so. I, I really had this message, particularly to women. Young women, girlfriends, we need you, okay? Um, so let's, let's go. 2020 is here. It's now. If you want to join our team, you can log online at underwoodforcongress.com um, and we'll be with you every step of the way.